Hey Rangers, welcome to Super Important Reviews. My name's Steve, and in this video, we'll be going over the Bandai Tomashi Nation SH Figure Arts Beetle Fighter G Stag and Reddle, or as some of you may know him as Green Hunter and Red Striker from Big Bad Beetleborgs. If you guys haven't seen Beetleborgs, I kind of did a little bit of a synopsis for it in my previous review for Blue Beats or the Blue Stinger Beetleborg, which I'll put a little card right here for you guys. But the main reason I picked up these figures is because, as I stated in that review, I've just been wanting some good representations of the Beetleborgs in my collection. And there's not really much better you can do than the SH Figure Arts line. And a funny thing too is, is that I actually found these guys at G-Fest, which I got these two and Black Beats in a little package deal, which I actually saved a little bit of money doing it that way. And it was really cool to actually find these figures at a Godzilla convention because it's not primarily what you'd go there for, but I was excited that they had them nonetheless. And one thing I want to point out with the shows that I thought was kind of funny real quick is that in Beetle Fighter, G-Stag is considered the strongest of the Beat Fighters, while Rettle is actually the fastest, which kind of makes sense between their Beetle attributes and whatnot. Well, in Big Bad Beetleborgs, he was actually considered the fastest role in here, and Joe actually got the strength ability, so it's kind of a weird topsy-turvy flip on the on TV shows. But I always thought it was kind of interesting and pretty funny in my opinion. But without further ado, for the packaging, love the front of this box. Actually, out of all the Beetle Fighter figures, I actually really like the front of this the best just because it makes for a really nice display piece because you get to see the two B Fighters right on the front of it. Looks really good where you get G-Stag and Ruddle. Some added information on the bottom with the B-Fighter emblem, Tomashi Nation Bandai. For the top of the package, you get to see all three of the B-Fighters, which is really awesome. On the side of the package, you get to see the Stinger Claw, kinda. On this side of the package, you get to see the left arm of Ruddle. On the back of the package, you just get them in some nice dynamic poses where it shows them with their beetle weapons, with their magnums, so it looks really awesome. Bunch of stuff I can't understand, and some Lego mumbo jumbo. So let's get these guys open up out of the cardboard prison. All right, so now that we have G Stag and Rettle open up out of the cardboard prison, first we're gonna go over some of their accessories, starting with their hand accessories, which the duo come with a pair of clench fists, a pair of more open relaxed hands, and then for each of them, for their left hand, they get a cupping hand and some pointing fingers. And for their right hands, they get a pair of gripping trigger finger hands, which is perfect for their input magnums, which grabbing one for a closer look. They each come with their own input magnum, which are identical, so I'm just gonna go over the one here but the details on this thing are amazing love the metallic silver for the gun barrel same with the trigger it has a really nice jet black for the handle here even for that little thing up there which i'm going to call it the hammer even for the input buttons right here has this nice metallic blue paint and it's a black here for the official barrel at the tip here looks amazing like the details on this thing especially for how small of a weapon this thing is is just amazing and what's actually neat too is they both come with holsters as you can see with g-stag here kind of holstering his gun is that right here on their thighs they have this little holster pouch here which looks really good too love the details on these things and what you do is you literally just take your input magnum put it right into the holster here looks really good the only thing is, is it sits in there kind of loose a little bit. So sitting on your shelf, it's going to stay in there very nicely. But when you're going to be playing around with this thing, it could have the chance of popping out. So just uh, be a little bit careful with that and just try not to lose the gun if you're messing around with this. But for the most part, sitting on your shelf, it should be perfectly fine. And then moving on with the right hand is they get a standard gripping hand, which is for their primary weapons. G-Stag comes with the Stinger Claw, and Reddle comes with the Stinger Plasmar. And in Big Bad Beetleborgs, they are also known as the Hunter Claw and the Striker Blaster. So first for the details, we're going to start with the Stinger Claw, which how I get this off is literally the hand's a little bit pliable, which easily just how you get out to is start with the bottom, pull on the fingers back a little bit, and then you just pop it underneath the thumb and you're good to go to get it on. But in terms of details, this thing looks amazing. Love the gold for the claws right here with some black on the inlays, looks really nice. Love the little scarab, has a lot of very nice details, even has some clear plastic here just so you can see the inner workings of the little fan that goes off here when they go do their special attack. Really nice handle, even has like some little pipes coming out that look like the legs here. 
And what's really cool too is about this is this one's actually articulated so the claw can open and close so you can catch his unsuspecting foes and crush them, which is really sweet. Also, it is a little bit articulated because you can actually spin this around. It's a little tight on mine, but it is possible to move this around so you kind of position it however you want, which is really cool. And what's neat too is this actually comes with its own little accessory where you could pop off this little thing right here. It comes with this slightly different version of the clear shell, which you initially when you hook this one on, as you can see, the little peg for the pickle here is towards the bottom of this. While on the other accessory, it actually is towards the top. So you could put it on and it fully reveals the fan here for when you want to do his raging slash. Then moving on to the Stinger Plasma, pretty much the exact same thing that we get with the Stinger Claw. But pretty much the only difference is, is the tip here, which looks really sweet. Has some really nice metallic red here at the tip of the prawns here. It looks really cool. Also, this part is articulated, which is cool. And also, these parts kind of actually pop off, which is kind of neat. I imagine that's how they get away with using the exact same uh, little scare for each of these. But it is cool that they are very reminiscent of the TV show. And also, you can pop this part off because it also comes with its own little extending piece, which it can extend getting it on here as well. Looks really cool, especially when you want to do the tornado spark. And for the final right hand, they come with a slightly different version of the gripping hand. This one a little bit more closer to a trigger finger, but it's not quite fully extended. Which they also come with a hand for blue beats right here, which is actually really sweet because they also come with another accessory for him, which is their pulse sabers, which is an awesome addition of these guys' added arsenal. They all look fan freaking tastic grabbing one of these guys to show you a little bit closer details. I'm primarily going to go over blue beats because the only major difference between them is that his is metallic green and that hers is metallic red. But for the details, it looks phenomenal. Love the metallic blue on the handle. The guard looks really good. Also like this red coming up the shaft here. It's more of a plain red, not anything metallic. Looks really cool. And one thing that's actually really cool about this pulse saber is that you can actually combine it to the input magnum to make the saber magnum. But the main reason I'm only going to go over one of these is that this thing terrifies me when doing this. But what you do is you have to pop off the top part of the guard right here, which you literally just pop it off, which is a bit of a pain. Also a little scary because this is very thin plastic and it kind of likes to pop back in and snap in. All right, so what you want to do is grab as firmly as you can at the base of the guard here and you just pull out the one side a little bit, pull it down just a tad. Don't pull too hard though because you might break the plastic and also it might pop back in any as it just did with me. Just kind of got to mess with it and just feel for the plastic for the most part, but it's a bit of a pain in the butt to get out of there. Jeez, man. I'm going to kind of hold you down just a tad just so I can lift up a little. Oh, there, no, nope. it's popping back in. Nope, 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 nope. There. All right, we got it out. Cool. <laughs> now, you'll see here for the pickles here is one thing you have to remember is that on both sides, they're actually different sizes. You can see this is more of a square. And on the other side, it's more of a rectangle. So when you're going to be flopping around, you just kind of got to match it up to the pegs, which I do believe I got it right right there. Push it right back in. Pretty easy stuff. And then you grab an input magnum. You just insert it into the little hole right there. Stays in there actually very nicely. And now you got the saber magnum, which is pretty cool in my opinion. I'm never ever going to actually be putting it on my display like this because I don't really like messing around with this because it does seem very scary, but it is really cool to have the option of doing this. And then bring a G stack for a closer look. Head sculpt looks awesome. Love all the molded details on here. Gives them a very nice metallic, more cybernetic look. Pretty much the same with his body too. Like in terms of just overall details, these figures are amazing. Like compared to a lot of my other SH figure arts and even most of the monster arts, like. These guys have an incredible amount of detail on them. You can see for his head, it has a very nice light shade of green. While for his chest piece, it's actually more of like a hunter green, which it's only pretty much primarily on the chest here and on the bottom of the feet as well. While the rest of the armor is more of this normal shade of green that you get for the head here, which looks really nice. Love the metallicness of it. it looks really good. 
Same with the eyes here, or this metallic red with some metallic black inside of here to kind of give it this more visor look with some metallic silver over the top of it. it. Has some really nice nubs for the side of the ears. Looks really cool. Moving down the body, which is something to point out for the body for this guy anyways, is that it's actually got a little bit more of an edge to it than a lot of the other Beetleborgs because they primarily have this more rounded edge. Bringing in Rettle for a closer look, you can see here She's very rounded looking and has a little bit more of a feminine shape to it. Well, Blue Beats also has that same rounded edge, but a little bit more bulkiness towards the chest area. Well, it's really nice to see with G-Stag here. He actually has a lot of differences in terms of just the overall body style than they do with the other two, which kind of makes him unique in my opinion. Really love the shape of it too. And what's kind of cool too is he has like these little transistor things looking right here. It kind of gives them like from far away. It looks like he has like some shotgun shells or grenades kind of hiding out in his chest area here. It looks really cool. Even on the back here, he has some tubes. Not exactly sure what they're for, but it's really cool that he has them because none of the other guys really have these on his back. Another thing too is he doesn't really have the beetle they see on a lot of the backs of the other beetle borgs. You can see a blue beats here. He has that kind of more beetle looking backpack. And the same with Reto, which hers actually looks very beetle like, really pretty. And his is just more of like very standard looking for what I would expect to see out of these like fighting kind of TV shows. And it's cool just to see a nice differentiation between each of the three where it's not like the exact same body molds for each of them in just slightly different colors. Like they actually have their own individual characteristics. Same with the shoulder pads here. His are also very different because again, theirs are very rounded. His has a little bit more of an edge to it. Looks really cool. But what is the similar between all of them is that their arms are literally the exact same mold, just slightly different shades for each of them. Which for his has this really nice green to it. Looks really good. One thing to point out too is uh, for this little piece right here, I don't know why, but it's only on these figures is that this one actually seems to pop out pretty easy when I'm actually doing the articulation on these guys. Well, this one actually stays in very nice. It does the same thing with Rettle, but Blue Beats did not have that problem. So I don't know if it's just with these figures or something, but it's just, it's something weird. But moving on with the details for his belt looks awesome. Actually very reminiscent of the Power Rangers right here with it. You could easily believe that this would be like a morpher or something like, Looks really awesome. And again, each of the belts are slightly different at each of the borers, which you can kind of see when I show these guys off for comparisons that each of these are going to be slightly different between the two. And on the back here, kind of looks like a boombox. And then moving down to his legs, again, exact same with all the other Beetleborgs. It's just for his, is this a nice shade of green. But again, it just has a lot of very nice details on there. Like, I just can't stress how pretty this figure looks in hand. Like it just has this nice metallic kind of look to him and even feel even though it's plastic but just with all the edges and stuff like you feel like this could be very cybernetic or like a motherboard kind of look to it looks cool with his more circular knee pads his gun holster right here which holds his gun which is cool and for the legs and the feet look very nice as well and then moving on to rudder real quick because pretty much again arms are pretty much the same as g-stag same with the legs but for the helmet, which is the primary difference between the two, really love hers. Like hers is actually probably my favorite helmet out of all three of them. Just because I really love the shade of red and it just looks really good on her. Same with the little beetle crest here at the top. Looks freaking adorable with how tiny it is. Love the eyes where it's this nice metallic gold with the black and the silver overlay visor look. Same with the... Kind of like what G-Stag had, but with a little bit more of a ninja look to it. Looks really good. Same with the little ear nubs, looking awesome as well. And same with the body, has this nice, very rounded, very feminine look to it. Looks really good. Again, with the backpack on here, looks very beetle-like and awesome. That pretty much for the armor, has this really nice metallic red for the majority of it. And this more burgundy color for the chest section right here, for the shoulder pads and the top part of the shoes. And then moving down to her belt, it's actually probably my least favorite out of the three personally, just cause it's pretty basic. Like this literally just looks like what you would expect a standard belt to look like. Even has the little latch on the back here. And then one other thing I didn't really point out is right here for the lower waist section or what I'm gonna call the underwear portion, is these are actually slightly different between each of them as well. Grabbing blue beats right here. You see 
there is a pretty big difference between the two. And also with G-Stag, it's actually very much different between the two. So again, it's cool to see that there's a decent amount of variety between each of the Beetleborgs in terms of overall appearance, because it's not like, oh, well, they're just kind of repaints and you don't really need to get them like, they each have their own individual characteristics and identity. Uh, just to show you guys her legs too, gun holster, and the boots. And just to briefly go over their articulation, I'm just gonna go over the one figure cause it's pretty much the exact same with both of them. So it's no point in really going over both these guys. But for the head sculpt, can look up, down, left, right, all the way around. Really nice posability, even has like a little bit of shift to it where it's like oomps, 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 oomps. And then for the shoulders, can move up, down, forward, back, rotate all the way around. Really nice play to there. Also, these shoulder pads can lift up and down because they are on a hinge joint, so there is a lot of posability there as well. Also, there's a rotation here at the upper part of the bicep. Nice double joint here at the elbow. Really nice. Really nice straight bend there too. Again, just be a little bit careful with this little center point because as you can see, it's starting to pop out a little bit as I'm moving that around. And then for the hands, can rotate all the way around. Also has a little bit of a bend to it, but they only bend in one certain direction, so you got to kind of adjust and fix the hand depending on how you want it to bend. Then for the waist, can move that far back and get your arm out of the way. That far back, that far forward, can rotate, I do believe, just that far side to side. Really nice posability there. Like you get these things on a really nice amount of posing. Really good. And then for the legs, they can shift a little bit up and down so you can adjust them to sit right outside of the underwear section of the Beetleborgs. And also shift it back in if you want a more cleaner look, but it does help with the posability. Cause you can get them to almost do the splits, but I haven't really played with these too much so I'm kind of working the joints in right now. So they spread about that far apart, that far in. Legs can kick forward about yay far. Backwards, if you pop it out a little bit, about that far. Really nice double joint here at the knee. Bends about that far straight. Also has a rotation here, just to point that out too. And for the feet, can bend about that far down, that far up. Can also tilt side to side. Rotate all the way around and also has a little bend here at the toe and for some quick comparison Here are all the beetleborgs together in one shot and finally in one place And here we have with one of their nemesis from B fighter black beats or who you also may know as the shadow board from big bad beetleborgs And here we have with some ultra act figures with the ultraman Gridman, or who you may also know as servos from superhuman samurai cyber squad and the original Ultraman. And here we have them with some of the Muddy Morph from Power Ranger legacy figures with the movie White Ranger and Red Ranger. And here we have them with one of my other G-Fest purchases, the SH Monster Arts Burning Godzilla, which hopefully I'll have a review out sometime in the near future. And here they are with another G-Fest acquired action figure, the Japanese Bandai Gal Red Ranger from Gal Ranger, who actually got autographed by the man himself, Noboru Kaneko. So overall, g Stag and Rettle, these figures are awesome. There's literally nothing thing I don't like about them like their paint job is awesome their details are great the amount of accessories they come with is actually pretty impressive their articulation is good and the funny thing is is that my only complaint that I had with blue beats was his price tag because when I picked that figure up initially he was $120 which seemed really steep for the action figure I still love it but it kind of pushes a lot of collectors out of there with it being at such a high price well, with these two, I actually picked up literally for the exact same price. So for the same price as Blue Beats, you get more Beetleborgs, more accessories that work with Blue Beats for the exact same price. So I definitely recommend you guys picking these up, especially if you already have Blue Beats. It's just a no-brainer to get these figures to go along with them. And they even have the villain out now, which I'll probably do a review sometime in the near future. So if you guys are really into Beat Fighter and love Big Bad Beetleborgs, then make sure to add these guys to your collection today. So what do you guys think? Have you guys picked up G-Stag and Rettle? What's your favorite version of Beat Fighter or Big Bad Beetleborgs? Or is it just Morphin' Time? Please let us know in the comments. Let's a closer picture of these guys on Facebook. You want to click the link in the description below. Help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button. Subscribe to become a ranger today, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.